Today we're gonna look at the gr most expensive, man expensive creatures there are in Magic the Gathering. We're gonna look at Ulamog's Crusher. It's an eight mana, eight eight Eldrazi. This might even be like a, an Eldrazi show more or less. It is, has Annihilator 2, which is one of the most dangerous mechanics in all of Magic the Gathering. Once you get annihilated once, you never want to see it again. Whenever this creature attacks, defending player sacrifices two permanents. It can get even worse from there. Ulamog's Crusher attacks each combat if able. So get ready for the sack. And whatever the Eldrazi's purpose is, it has nothing to do with something so insignificant as us. 8-8 creature. Is it worth it? I can't remember. Was this like a popper playable card at one time? Honestly, if you're at 8 mana, you can do even more busted things in this world. So do you know what? I don't actually think it, that it's all that worth it. All right, we got to start off with our uh, first super chat of the day. We got Jay Hoag. Uh, sorry. Hoeg? Hoeg? I think it's Hoeg. You get you, uh, you corrected me one day. It that betrays. It's funny, this is a creature, isn't it? It sounds like the name sounds like a sorcery to me. It is a 12 mana, 11, 11 creature. Uh, it's got, also got Annihilator too. But whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent, that car, put that card onto the battlefield under your control. Now the difference between this card and Ulamog's Crusher is that you gotta be careful what you sacrifice because whatever you sacrifice, even if it's a land, it comes under our control. I like it that betrays. Actually brings good value. Uh, ben says, decisive arms in Yu-Gi-Oh is way more situationally... I have no idea what the hell that came from. Beanpot, bringer of the Black Dawn. Oh, the bringer cycle. Uh... If Platonic Liquid would be proud. Okay, we got uh, Black Black 7 Generic 5-5. Five, five. You can pay Wooburg rather than pay this spell's mana cost. It's got Trample. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may pay two life. If you do, search your library for a card and put that... Uh, shuffle your library and put that card on top. I actually think this card is broken. You can be paid for five mana, and you got a Vampiric Tutor effectively almost every single turn. Definitely worth it. Liquid Soulfly not holding anything back. Emrakul! The Ion's Torn! I don't even have a super chat for this this creature. What do I have here? No, God, please, no! It's basically whatever uh, whatever danger you can bring <laughs> whatever danger you can think of, it's 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 encapsulated into this 15 mana, 15, 15 Eldrazi. That can't be countered, so uh you've got counter spells in your hand. No, you don't anymore. Okay, whenever you cast a spell, take an extra turn after this one. It says, one of the most expensive time warps in the game, but if you pull it off, I mean, your opponent is basically dead. Flying protection from spells that are one or more color, but not abilities. All right, you can still Oblivion Ring this thing. You can still Ottawara this thing. You can still, I don't know, there, there are things. There's things and stuff that you can do. Okay, and it's got Annihilator 6. That's a very high, I think it's the highest an Annihilator. You get this thing out on turn three, four, five, and you wipe out your, your opponent's entire board. And whenever uh, Emrakul the Ion's Torn is put into a graveyard from anywhere, its owner shuffles uh, their graveyard into their library. So you got uh, anti mill tech. You mill this thing into the graveyard, you shuffle your entire graveyard back into your library. Definitely worth it. And so worth it, it's banned in Commander. A little too banned in Commander, if you ask me. Underworld Paradise with Hole Breaker Horror. One of the best cards in Cube, really. Uh, it's a blue, blue, five generic, seven, eight flash. Can't also can't be countered. Sorry, counter spell players. You know, if I'm gonna spend seven or fifteen mana, I'd like my spell to resolve. Thank you very much. And as whenever you cast this spell, you may choose up to one. Return target spell you don't control to its owner's hand. And, or uh, return target an online permit to its owner's hand. Oh, like, so you try to play something? All right, I play Opt in response. Oh, bounce the spell back to your hand. Yeah, I'm not countering it. It's funny, a Hole Breaker Horror beats a Hole Breaker Horror. So make sure you get your Hole Breaker Horror out first before they do. Definitely worth it. Next Super Chat, we've got from Platonic Liquid. Enormous Super Chat. You want to, oh, you want all the other bringers. Uh, ad hoc the bringer tier list. All right, let's get bringer of the we did the black one 
So I go, we go down the list. The blue one. Uh, nine mana for a 5-5. Five, five. Play Wooburg. Has Trample. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may draw two cards. Absolute banger. I would love to have that card. Five mana. It's like Consecrated Sphinx. Sort of. Maybe not exactly. Okay, it's not Consecrated Sphinx. But you know what? It's a Trampler card that ge it makes me feel like I have Ancestral Recall every upkeep, right? That's value. And we also have Bringer of the Green Dawn. You can pay Wooburg rather than pay 9 man. It also has Trample. As we have your upkeep, you may create a 3-3 three, three Beast Creature token. Honestly, very sad face. Not very impressed by that card. Not worth it. I mean, it's okay. If you can spend 5 mana on this, it's okay. Not as good as the other Bringers. Bringer of the Red Dawn. You can spend Wooburg instead of paying 9. Also has Trample. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may untap target creature and gain control of it until end of turn. That creature gains haste until end of turn. Almost worth it enough. Make sure you have a sack outlet. Otherwise, it's going to be awkward. I like that it's every single turn, not just one turn. And then we have the Bringer of the White Dawn. Uh, pay Wooburg, otherwise pay 9. Trample. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may return target artifact card from your graveyard to play. That's broken. That's insane. So you can just dump busted artifacts in the graveyard and bring them right back. So basically, all the bringers are great except for the uh, except for the green one. Well, they screwed the green one. You know, everyone says green is the most broken color in Magic. Well, not in the bringer cycle, that's for sure. Okay, we got Arethusa with Lotus Guardian. Let's start with something bad. Sure, why not? People love the bad cards. 7 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Flyer, add 1 mana of any color to your mana pool. 1 mana pool? This is the most expensive mana dork of all time. That's right. Just to, to help you curve into your 9 drops. Curve into your, Eldra <laughs> to your Eldrazi's to some weird degree. I mean, at least it packs a bigger punch, you know, than a Birds of Paradise. Birds of Paradise out there attacking air. Lotus Guardian attacking Birds of Paradise. Next super chat we've got from Alpha Nerd. Thank you for the Terrasac. Ter or, or sorry, not Terrasac. Terrasc. Terrasc. Is that how it is? The Terrasc. Nine mana for a 10 10. Uh, has haste and ward 10 as long as it was cast. That is uh, absolutely outrageous. Whenever it attacks, it fights target creature defending player controls. I like the Ward 10, basically indestructible. I mean, not technically, you can board wipe this thing. There's a lot of ways of killing it, but basically removal says, uh-uh-uh, you gotta pay the Ward 10. And very likely you can, I can't even pay the Ward 10. I only have nine mana. If I can't pay it, you probably can't uh, pay it. Pretty cool card. We got, oh, it's a ta the tar ask. It's a tar ask. I asked for its tar. This doesn't look like a real... This looks like an AI-generated card. It's like Godzilla and, like, uh, the Avengers come and go uh, attack the damn thing. Okay, uh, let's... I saw Terra Scoo. Yeah, everyone sees something different. Witherfang, has anyone tried Timeless yet? Uh, I have not, actually. Too many formats for me. I know a lot of other people have. King Ginger with Villis, the Broker. Of the blood. Black, 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 five generic for an 8 8 demon flying. Pay a black, pay two life. Target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. That's like okay, but it's not great when I gotta pay like six life and three mana in order to kill a three toughness creature. Whenever you lose life, you draw that many cards. Oh! You know, now all of a sudden I don't even care if I kill the creature. I don't care at all, actually. I'm just looking for a creature to distribute minus one, minus one counters. Hey, you could use a minus one counter. You could use a minus one, minus one counter. You could use a minus one, minus one counter. Oh, this is insane. That's value. You can sign or you can spend your life imagining what might have been yours. Great value. Okay, we got Blake Mamba. Itali. You people like that. This shows up every damn show. Like, what about the Primal Storm guy? I mean, it's not, he, he's disqualified on this show. But this guy shows up every damn show for some reason. Is it like the most popular commander or something? 7 mana for a 7-7. Seven, seven. I like how the uh, the alternate toughness is 11. 7-11 creature over here. 
Uh, Elder Dinosaur, Trample. Enters the battlefield, each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. You may cast any number of spells this way among the non-land cards exiled this way without paying their mana cost. Yes, I do love exiling cards and playing cards for free. And then for essentially 9 mana, but 10 if you don't pay the Phyrexian, turns into the 11-11 Trample Indestructible Infector, because whenever it deals combat damage to a player, they get that many poison counters. That's a very weird way to say Infect. I mean, it's essentially Infect. They get that many poison counters. Oh, oh, is it double? So they deal the damage and they deal the infect at the same time? Is that how this works? It's just a bit weird. Whenever, Oh, but it's only a player. So, oh, the creatures don't get the infect. That's the difference. The creatures just take damage to the face. They get stomped by the skeleton dinosaur. Oh, we got the set. There we go. That's a good spot for my dinosaur sound effect. Okay, we got Teamer with Tiamat. Isn't Tiamat Teamer? Oh no, it's uh, it's multicolor. Uh, it is, it is seven mana. Okay, Wooberg two generic seven seven flyer. Enters the battlefield. If you cast it, switch your library for up to five dragon cards now not named Tiamat, and uh, that each have different names. Reveal them and put them back into your hand. It would be weird if Tiamat was like a harbinger of, of Tiamat. <laughs> I gotta call myself over to the yard. Yeah, it doesn't work whatsoever. Blake Mamba, thank you so much for your super chat. All three of the Galtas. Okay, hold on. Let's look up Galta. Galta, period. How many Galta? There are three Galtas. All right, we'll look at all three. It was a big super chat. Galta and Maverin for seven mana. 12 12 Trampler. Whenever you attack, choose one. Create a tapped and attacking green XX green dinosaur creature token with Trample, where X is the greatest power among other attacking creatures. And also create X11 vampire creature tokens with lifelink. Lifelink? Where white. What? Uh. With lifelink, where X is the number of other attacking creatures. Where X is the number of other attacking creatures? So we don't even get a big thing out of this. Create a tap and attacking XX green ooze. Hold on, green, sorry, green dinosaur creature token with trample. I like that, where X is the greatest power among other attack. No, it's among other attacking creatures. You know what? I don't know if I read this card properly in the past. So you need something else big attacking in order to get the benefit from uh, these other two. On the other hand, it's a 12 12 trampler for seven mana. I don't know. I'm not liking it. X is the number of other attacking creatures. If it counted itself, it'd be broken. It'd be great, but it's actually other. I don't know if I read that correctly in the past. Life Link, more like Life Alert or Life Beat. There's a Soren that can cheat that one up. I know there's a Soren, but then you make the Soren deck more clunky. Galta, Primal Hunger. 12 mana for a 12 12. But X, less to cast for X is total power among creatures you control and has trample. Great card. Actually, is is actually playable. Because you can just play with a bunch of creatures, cast this thing for four mana, and have a 12 12 trampler. That's not bad value. And also, Galta Stampede Tyrant. It's an eight mana 12 12, again, trample. What's Galta without her trample? Uh, and when Galta Stampede Tyrant enters the battlefield, put any number of creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield. Oh my god, a danger! It's absolutely a danger. It's damn hypergenesis attached to a damn dinosaur. Alrighty then. Okay, Weatherfang, technically, Gurmog Angler is a one-drop, but it does count for this show. It is not technically, usually, practically, you mean. But technically, it's seven mana. It's a black six generic 5-5 five, five with Delve, which means you can exile cards from your graveyard rather than pay the colorless cost. So, usually, if you play this card, you are spending one mana, and you're not spending a penny more. Alpha Nerd. Thraxamunder? The racks, um, I don't even know what the hell this is. It's a Grixis for a generic 6 6 zombie assassin with haste. Uh, whenever Thraxamunder attacks, if any player sacrifices a creature, that's pretty good. Okay, I like that part of it. Whenever a player sacks a creature, you may put a plus one plus one counter on Thraxamunder. Okay, you know what? I don't think this is bad. I mean, if your opponent has a million tokens, then whatever, you're screwed anyway. But if they have very few creatures, I mean, it just basically says sack, make your opponent sack the thing. If you're playing multi-way, somebody's gonna have very few creatures on the board, or they're gonna have to make a, they're gonna have a big decision. Do I, do I sacrifice this, or do I sacrifice that? And then whatever's left, hopefully, can block the damn Thraxamunder. I like it. 
Okay, what do we got here? Uh, Christopher B. with a Velikin Dragon. The hell is that? I can't even read it. Disqualified. Oh, and we got... Uh, <laughs> this is very rare. I can't read the damn card. It's a Sega Dreamcast card? What a weird promo is this? Okay, flying. When uh, It's seven mana. When Velikin Dragon attacks or blocks, it gets plus X plus zero until end of turn, where X is a number from zero to five chosen at ra uh, at random. Whoops, I lost my... Uh... Hold on. It's chosen at, chosen at random. I gotta fix my... I reset my music by accident. I'm doing this every so often. Okay, what song did we have here? We had... This one. Excellent. Yeah, okay, so that's weird. This is like a... And it's zero to five. They would never make this today. In the past... Like, if they were to redesign this today, they would definitely include... Oh, I guess you can still use a die, right? So one rep... I guess six can represent the zero, and then every other number represents themselves, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I guess... Uh, I guess that works out. Alright, I'm back on track. Better not mi I better mi not misclick anything. Okay, Blightsteel Colossus from Toads. Blightsteel. I have to say, is this an overrated card? Like, how the hell do you even get this thing in play? And when you have it in play, I mean, you're going to be the target, right? It's a 12 mana 11 11. It does not have... Uh, like, it, it has... Well, it's indestructible. But it's really hard to cheat out. Like, Tinker is banned everywhere. Okay, it's got Trample, Infect, Indestructible. And if it would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal it and shuffle into its owner's library instead. So you can't even reanimate it. It's like, it's one of the harder creatures to actually get into the game. Yeah, it's a fine Tinker target. In it's not even that, actually. They don't even play, they barely play Blightsteel and Tinker. Uh, I mean, in Vintage. They usually go for, like, Sphinx of the Steel Wind and crap like that. Because it's more res... Uh, I don't know. I guess it's more resilient or something. Have we done Death Shadow? Death Shadow's one mana. You cheated out with Magda? Touche, actually. Do you know what? I guess that works out. All right, we have to say it's a good card. I mean, it's it's incredibly busted. Wait your turn, Wa. Don't we going to... Uh, you wait your turn. You slow down. I get through everyone's super chats. You're in or You're you're in order. Okay, Stanel with the uh, Polar Kraken. We got blue, 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 eight generic, eleven, eleven Trampler, and when it comes into pl it comes into play tapped. It's about to eat some polar bears, it's taking a bite of that ice just as a snack. Does anyone snack on ice out there? I'm not one of those people, but I could s I can see it. Cumulative upkeep, sacrifice a land. Why am I? Why? Okay, so honestly. 11 mana, you know, Galta can trample for basically as much for less mana. Galta doesn't come into play tapped. Galta gets other abilities. Galta doesn't sacrifice a land. This card sucks. Absolutely sucks. All right, now we get to WoW. You see, I told you. I told you WoW we'd get around to you. Chancellor of the Forge. Your favorite in multiples. All right, we got a red, 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 four generic, five, five, giant. Reveal this card from your opening hand. If you do, at the beginning of the first upkeep, put a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token with haste onto the battlefield. But when Chance of the Forge enters the battlefield, put X-1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens with haste on the battlefield, where X is the number of creatures you control. So it's like... It's sort of like, uh, what's it called? Think of that goblin you tap, and then you put a bunch of tokens into play can't remember and I think that guy has haste this is like essentially a very similar card you can, but you can't reveal it from your opening hand you get the one one immediately I sort of like that it's not terrible it's okay I really honestly don't want to spend seven men on this ability but like it's it's all right yeah I was thinking a Cranko yeah that was thinking I was thinking Cranko now the difference between Cranko and this is you, this guy gives you tokens at the beginning of the game before you even have lands on the battlefield. The Noob Master with Leviathan. 
Yeah, we're... I'm assuming you're talking about THE Leviathan. Blue, 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 blue. Five generic for a 10-10 Trampler coming to play tapped. Does an untap during your untap step. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice two islands. If you do untap the Leviathan, and it can't attack unless you sacrifice two islands. Get it out of here! God, this is one of the worst cards of all time. We'll definitely go down in history as the most garbage of garbage. I don't know, back then people said they played with this card, but they obviously didn't play against any Wheel of Fortune Black Lotus decks. Okay, Platonic Liquid with a niche card. Apex Devastator! I feel like we have heard this card many times. Devastator. This was a meme last time. Okay, we got 7 mana! Sorry, no, 10 mana! It's 10 mana for a 10-10. But it's gonna Cascade, 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 and Cascade. So it's gonna get, like, way more creatures than you expect. It's a good card. Again, you're like rolling the dice on this thing. You don't know what you're... G Life is like an Apex Devastator. You don't know what you're gonna get. Anyone is welcome to steal that from me. I'd be very proud if that became a part of the MTG lexicon. Okay, uh... Def Donable, the other Emrakul, the promised end. And, uh, I wonder what end they were promising. Their end or, like, Ravnica's... Not, not Ravnica. What is this? Uh... Is it Ravnica? Where the hell is she? I don't know the lore very well. Anyway, 13 for 1313 Eldrazi. I guess her power is equal to her mana cost. And Emrakul the Promised End costs one less to cast for each card type among cards in your graveyard. And whenever you cast Emrakul, uh, you gain control of target opponent. Uh, during that player's next turn. After that turn, that player takes an extra turn. So you're actually not taking away their turn. It's like you're getting an extra turn, but you're basically using it to screw over your opponent. Also has Flying Trample, Protection from Instance. An Enigma as vexing as life itself. Excellent card. Uh, it was a huge uh, tournament staple for quite a while in Standard. Uh, Diego with Gis Gishath, Sun's Avatar. Gishath. We've got an 8-mana 7-6 dinosaur. Getting some good use out of my dinosaur sound effect today. Thank you very much, people. Vigilance Trample Haste. Deals combat damage to a player. Reveal that many cards on the top of your library. Put any number of dinosaur creature cards from among them onto the battlefield. What are you, nuts? And the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This is better than Cascade. It's actually straight up disgusting. All right, this is a very good card. Take control of target opponent sounds funny as hell. <laughs> it is. It's. Uh, I also. My. The funny thing is, I'm a mer. I play Merfolk in Modern. People play Emrakul, the Promised End. Uh, they used to in Tron. So anyway, they cast this card, and they can't do anything. Like the only thing they can do really is make me attack them. So like it gets no value. I can't count how many times people took my turn. Like, I'm just an innocent creature deck. I'm so fair. They can't do anything. They can't kill my own creatures. Yeah, so they just basically tap all my mana and pass. Uh, let's look at the super chat of Algot. And this is Gleemax. It's not a real card. Disqualified, so we'll donate this card to uh, Markzilla, Magmatic Force. It is an 8 mana 7-7 seven, seven elemental. At the beginning of each upkeep, Magmatic Force deals 3 damage to any target. Honestly, at 8 mana, I don't know if that's worth it. Also, in that stage of the game, you get a free lightning bolt every turn. It's like okay, but honestly, I'm not very impressed. If it was like 5 damage, maybe it would be fine. 3 feels a little underwhelming for my- I did a, You don't even get an ETB out of this. You gotta wait until next turn before you get any value. It's just a 7-7 seven, seven vanilla creature until then. Not in love with it. Matt with Avacyn. Who's an Avacyn fan out there? Angel of Hope. Who's playing Avacyn Kindred in their deck? Okay, we got a white, 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 five generic angel for an 8-8 flying, vigilance, indestructible, and other permanents you control have indestructible. I don't understand that part. Why don't they just say flying vigilance, all permanents you control have indestructible? It's like, she's indestructible and everything else is indestructible. 
weird. Weirdly worded. I don't understand, but definitely worth it. If you can get this thing out, definitely one of the better things you can have on the battlefield. Your board is indestructible. Board wipes fear no longer. John with a super chat. Uh, damn yeah, Sage of Stone. We need the H deck with her. The Sage, seven mana. In Soul Tie, that's a bit rare. Oh, we have a 4-4 four, four Gorgon Wizard, Death Touch. Skip your draw step. Well, that doesn't sound very good. But, so how are we, what are we compensating here? At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have fewer than seven cards at hand, draw cards equal to the difference. Oh my god, it's unlimited card draw. Empty your hand and draw more cards. The beginning of your, yeah. So basically, empty your hand as much as possible. Your own personal, not Wheel of Fortune. What is this? I don't know anything that refills your hand, but I mean, I guess it's a free Necropotence. Yeah, it's Necropotence, but you pay no life, and you can't go beyond seven cards. I like. I think this card's great. That's a lot of value. Cool card too. We got the Mega Banani Morbid Bloom. Has a super cool name. That's about it. Oh. And a weird picture. All right, it's six mana, which means it's disqualified from the show. It's also a sorcery, also not a creature. So how many times did we, uh, okay, so we get disqualified on mana cost, we get disqualified by card type. We, get to, we got disqualified all over the place. I wonder if MTG has any cards that are just straight up says creatures can't activate abilities. Yes, it's called Cursed Totem. <laughs> there is a card that, call, here, I'll show you. You hate activated abilities? Cursed Totem will, is your, is your, this Cursed Totem is your totem. Abzo, Autocron Worm. <laughs> what the hell is this? 15 mana for 19, 914, but you can convoke it in play and as trample. You know, even if you can convoke this thing in play, I don't like it. Like, were you gonna spend 15 of your tokens to get a 914 in play? With Trample? Come on, just go wide for the win already. Baby got back? I don't know the reference. Or I don't see the similarity. Next super chat from King Ginger. The Avatar of the Slaughter. Or Avatar of Slaughter. We got Red Red 6 generic 8 8. All creatures have double strike and attack each combat if able. This is just chaos. Okay, right, everybody. I give, I grant you double your power, but at the cost, you must use it. With great power comes no responsibility at all. Go at him. Um, I don't know if this is actually good. To be honest, I think this is probably bad. Like, you're giving everyone else just as much power as you. If not, maybe more. It's, so, it's like, Newt, it's like, I don't think it's good, but maybe it's not bad. This is just like a type of card, you know, you just want to screw around with the board. Uh, Carton Cater. Well, you love the card. Well, you love the chaos, I would say. We have Iona. Shield of Ameria. Once banned in commander, uh, sorry, still banned in commander. White, 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 six generic, seven, seven angel with flying. Enters the battlefield, choose a color. Your opponents can't cast spells of the chosen color. It was your painter servant, and painter servant got unbanned. This card's actually bro- it's broken. Uh, but you know what? If you're playing one color, you deserve to be screwed. Like me. I'm a mono blue player myself. I've, I've gotten ruined by Iona one, many times in my life. Thank God this card is not the reanimator target that it once was. Iona did nothing wrong. I don't know about that. Very unfun card to play against. Honestly, it's just as bad as, uh, what's it called? Uh, the, the creature that gives everything minus two, minus two, but gives their creatures plus two, plus two. It's just as bad for me. None of my creatures live. Okay, next super chat we got from Lloyd. Lloyd with the super chat. Hierophant. The Bio Titan. Oh, this thing. Very cheap in a plus one, plus one deck. All right, we got a 12 mana, 12, 12, with Frenzied Metabolism. 
As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may remove any number of plus one plus one counters from among creatures you control. This spell costs two less to cast for each counter removed this way. Vigilance Reach Ward 2. Those are good abilities. And Titanic. Literally the Titanic. Hiro Aerophant Bio Titan can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. But it can be blocked by everything else. Does not have trample for the amount of power that it has. Actually, I don't like this card. Because it also... I don't mind if you could cast this for free for each counter that are on your permanence. But you have to remove the counters. So you got to make your stuff weaker just to have a 12-12 effectively vanilla creature on the battlefield. I don't think it's worth it. Not in love with this card. Okay, you heard the music. And you know what that sound means? It means it's time to thank our sponsors, FusionGamingOnline.com. You want to know where I get my magic cards from? Again, from FusionGamingOnline.com. Uh, you have a few minutes left to get 15% off select commander singles, but there is no time limit on how many Lost Caverns of Ixalan cards you can go get. I've got my Tashana's Tie Binders. Do you? And if you don't, you might want to get them at FusionGamingOnline.com. And no matter what you get, don't forget to use coupon code NIKACHU at checkout for 5% off all your purchases. Just like I would do. And I would also have to thank Mana Traders, the premier place for renting Magic cards online. Play any deck, any format you want on Magic Online. Standard, Pioneer, Modern, Legacy, Vintage, Commander, One-on-One -on -one Commander, and more. Uh, you can support the channel you're renting using my Mana Traders link in the description below or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code NIKACHU underscore BA8. Fact of Superman expensive creatures. Big clunkers. They like to be chunky. Hinara, uh... Thought Monitor. You know, it's hard to remember that this card actually is 7 mana. Because I've never seen anyone cast it for 7 mana. I've never even seen anyone cast this thing for 3 mana. The 2-2 two, two Construct Affinity Art for Artifact. Flying. When enters the battlefield, draw 2 cards. Absolutely... You know what? This card is broken, but I think it's being kept in check by Orcish Bowmasters. It's being completely kept in check by Orcish Bowmasters. This card would be better if Bowmasters didn't exist. Because now you get punished! You play your Thought Monitor and it just dies. Inst instant death! This is not a 7 mana creature, let's be real. It is, it is like Grumog Angler, technically 7 mana, but you never see anyone do it. Witherfang says, I'm glad I bought my tie binder before they skyrocketed in price. I wish I was smart as you. I was not. Okay, Tommy, we want to get Hogak in there. This is a card that no one spends mana on. Seven mana, eight, eight. Oh, let's go down the roll call. You can't spend mana to cast this card. You should be sus very sus. Very sus of that ability. Convoke and delve. Even more sus. You may cast Hogak from your graveyard. And it's got Trample. I mean, it's just an all-around abomination. You know, but to be honest, when it was in spoiler season, we all thought this card sucked. It was like, ah, this is just a big, clunky commander card. This isn't possible. And then it was possible. Anyway, yeah. Uh, absolutely broken card. Black Mamba uh, with Zakama, Primal Calamity. People love your Zakamas. I played against this in Modern once. Uh, it tore me to shreds. It was a seven, it's a seven mana nine nine. Vigilance reach trample. But the deal is when it airs the battlefield, if you cast it, untap all lands you control. So it's free to basically get in play. And has three very relevant annoying abilities. The first one is three, three mana, deal three damage to target creature. Now you have nine mana already. So basically you can shoot things down for like nine damage. Uh, then for 3 mana, you destroy artifacts or enchantments, and for 3 mana, you gain 3 life. So if you have nothing else to do, you can gain 9 life a turn. That's worth it, in my opinion. Absolutely worth it. Hogak should have flash. Were you kidding me? You people are nuts. Okay, sit the cat. World Spine Worm. This is actually the overall... This is a very curious card. So it's 11 mana... It's a 15-15 Trampler. When it dies, put three 5-5 five, five green worm creature tokens with Trample onto the battlefield. Uh, and when it's put into a graveyard from anywhere, you shuffle into its owner's library. It has two dual purposes, usually in competitive decks. Like, either you you sack it to Nourishing Shoal to gain 11 life, or you cheat this in play with, like, Sneak Attack, and if it dies, 
who cares you still get fifth you still get 15 worth of power in play because when it dies you get the five five so actually it's pretty good good card next super chat we got from was back with crick crick sunny yogmoth who's the mother OP and EDH, one with him on turn two, LOL. Anyways, got to bounce after this. Talk to you later, Wa. You'll probably see this on the replay. All right, for three, Frexian Black, four generic, a two, two, Horror Minion, uh, Lifelink. For each black in a cost, you may pay two life rather than pay the mana cost. Well, no kidding. And then uh, whenever you, oh, this is just for cards in general. For each black in a cost, you just pay life for everything after that. Oh, that's broken. And then whenever you cast a black spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on Crick, son of Yogmoth. Basically, everything is on Frexian mana. Pretty broken card, actually. Also looks like a rules nightmare. He was born after Yogmoth made a bargain with his mom. I don't get it. Okay, let's move on to Rowan. Oh, uh, do we do Primal Conqueror? Yeah, we did Primal Conquer already. Let's go to... Okay, we got... You can... Are you... Again, you... We did Primal Conquer already. It's been done. Okay, we'll go with Turiot. Sauron! Lord of the Rings. Yet only features one ring. And you don't even see it very strongly. Is there any alternate arts of Sauron? I think Sauron got screwed on his art. You don't even see his one ring. It should have been some pose like this. Right? Am I am I right? Him showing off his one ring. Or he should have all the rings on his fingers or something. He probably put them all on his hands when he made them all. Took some selfies before he gave them away. Okay, Grix. <laughs> Grix is 5 generic for a 9-9. Whenever you cast this spell, amass orcs 5. Mill 5 cards and return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Trample, and whenever a commander an opponent controls dies, the ring tempts you. It's not a bad card. Whenever a commander an opponent controls dies, the ring tempts you. But I don't like that ability. Whenever you cast this spell, amass orcs 5. So you get a 5 power cre- You get a 5-5 five, five creature. You return a creature card from your grab- Oh, do you know what? That's- That's a broken ability. The casting thing is great, so Sauron actually wants to die, because when he comes back, he comes back with the orcs, he'll be back for revenge. But Sauron lost his ring. Well, not in here, you can see, I think you see the shine over here. You see all that over here? When he was the Lord of the Rings, he had his ring. When he got his hand cut off, uh, not so much. Alpha Nerd! Uh, we've got the Lord of Change from Look. Went from Lord of the Rings to a Lord of Pocket Change. Okay, it is a blue 6 generic 6-6 six, six demon. Flying Ward 3, Architect of Deception. When Lord of Change enters the battlefield, draw three cards. That's insane. I like it. I like the card. It's not the most insane card. You know, at 7 mana, I think you want to be, you know, affecting the battlefield a little bit more. Just like uh, the Lord of the Rings, or Sauron, I should say. Uh, but you know what? I don't mind. I don't mind drawing three cards. You also could be empty-handed at that point. Okay, who hasn't got a card yet? Tony! With, uh, Lord Xander. Oh, this guy. I was- I had high hopes for this guy. Okay, Grixis for generic for a 6-6 six, six Vampire Demon Noble. Enters the battlefield! Target opponent discards half cards in their hand. Rounded down. But it's only one opponent! When it attacks, defending player mills half their library rounded down. And when Lord Xander dies, target opponent sacks half the non-land perms they control rounded down. I'm not, I'm honestly not impressed by this card. Maybe it's better in Commander. When it dies, you bring it back and you keep sacking it to make people lose half their permanence. But they're just going to keep the good stuff, right? I think they're only going to keep the good stuff. I'm not a big fan of uh, Lord Xander. Uh, we've got some 124C with the wolf pack. Which wolf pack? Oh, the wolf pack, the OG. All right, we got eight mana for a seven six. You may have wolf pack assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. It's basically unblockable. It's so that ability is more strong than trample. Um, 
Does the creature still deal dam get taken damage? So does it deal damage to a creature and on top of that deal damage to the opponent? Because it may have assigned its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. But does that also consider the thing... Is it also going to deal damage to the thing? I don't know. I can't interpret this card. It's like, it's okay. You know what? It's better than trample, in my opinion. Yeah, don't turn your pack... You turn your back on the wolf pack. It's just a worse thorn. Is it worse? Worse than thorn elemental. I think it's pretty good for a fatty creature. Not bad. Not bad at all. The creature is blocking it, still damage it. That's fine. I wasn't... I didn't think you assigned the combat damage. It, it either hits the opponent or the creature. Okay, that's sort of the question I needed answered. That's that's what I needed. I think we did have an Angel of Hope. Yeah, we did this one. Everything's in... It was a good one. Okay, Larry Law. Inane as one. This is... What the hell? T 12 mana for an 8-8. Eight eight. It's a spirit. When inane as one comes into play, if you played it from your hand, you may search your library for a spirit card. Put it into play, then shuffle your library. All right, that's a good... That's a good ability. When inane as one is put into your graveyard from play, you may remove it from the game. If you do return target spirit card from your graveyard to play. All right, so you get two abilities, but it's 12 mana. Ah, 12 mana to tutor something into play and then tutor another thing into play. You play from your hand, you may search your library for a spirit card. Does this combo with anything? It's put from the graveyard, may remove it from the game. Oh, just to make sure you can't keep uh, looping itself back onto the battlefield. You know what? For 12 mana, I don't like it. It's a, you know, 8 mana, I would like it. 12 mana, this is too much. Which is a little, it's like, really too much. This isn't your spirit deck. Your spirit plays Golgari. What kind of spirit deck is that? So weird. It's 12 mana in Golgari, which means it's the easiest thing ever to reanimate or Elvish Piper. Okay, look, Elvish Piper is a slightly overrated card in my opinion. Okay. Okay. OG Baron Singer, maybe. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't really like this. It's okay. Eight mana for a 5-5 five, five flyer. Whenever a creature dealt damage by Baron Singer, this turn is put into a graveyard. Put a plus two, plus two counter on Baron Singer. You can also tap it to regenerate another target vampire. This card's terrible. Seven mana to regenerate my damn vampires. The vampires were meant to be... They're dead already. Okay, uh, next super chat we got from Blake Mamba. But thank you very much for the Baron Singer. It is definitely a uh, qualifying card on this show. World Spine Worm. We did that one. Sorry, you got sniped. You got sniped, Blake Mamba. We're going to give it to Tracer. Rust Goliath. 10 mana. 10 mana for a 10 10. Ooh, you get a little bit of a discount paying for five. It's just a 3 5 creature. It's got Reach and Trample. Well, you know what? I actually... It's okay. So I'm only giving it okay because you have the option to pay five mana. You get, you have a, you can reduce, you can reduce its casting cost in exchange for its power, significantly exchange for its power. So what is it? Just a spider at five mana? You know what? I don't like this. Even at five mana, I don't like it. Get out of here. I don't like it. It's a not it's a decent mana sink like late in the game, but that's about it. Alright, we got uh Carton Cater with Void Winnower. Ooh, this is a screwy card, that's for sure. Okay, it's a nine mana, eleven nine Eldrazi. Your opponents can't cast spells with even converted mana costs. And that's not all. Your opponents can't block with creatures with even mana costs either. So basically, the Void Winnower is setting the rules of the law around here, and the law is the Eldra the way of the Eldrazi. I'm trying to think, there are some even costed Eldrazi's, so uh, if your opponent has those Eldrazi's, they can't even do anything. Yeah, I can even, exactly. Toads, you got it right. Okay, we got, let's go with the Chenfred, get one. Chenfred, you get a card. Jen, where did you go? Okay, I can't find you. I'll find you later. Uh, next up, let's go with Dinglebags. Arc type of Endurance. 
This is a uh, eight mana six five boar. Creatures you control have hexproof. I like that. Creatures or opponents control lose hexproof and can't gain or have hexproof. Interesting. I guess it's fine. You know, nothing wrong with gaining some hexproof. I don't know how valuable it is to remove your opponent's hexproof, though. That's totally fine. I, can't, I swear Chen Fred said something. Where's Chen's card? Is he here? Chen, where are you? I feel like he just disappeared. Okay, whatever. We'll move on. Matt with Crater Hoof Behemoth. Crater Hoof. Okay, 8 mana, 5-5 five, five haste. But whenever uh, Crater Hoof enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X. Until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. You better believe it. That card is absolutely busted. It's, in fact, it's so bu- it, But there is a good- Good- There is some, uh, something good about Crater Hoof Behemoth. Uh, it'll end the game. So if the, the board is clogged with a million creatures, you rip your Crater Hoof Behemoth, congratulations, everything is plus 40, plus 40, and you can- everyone can finally go home. This card was so important to ending games of Commander, they re they literally printed a white version of this ha that has flying instead of trample. It's a great card. Homer! With, uh, Maelstrom Wander. This is an 8 mana 7 5. Creatures in control of haste. Haste, you say. It's got Cascade, Cascade. It's no Apex Devastator, but do you know what? Actually, this might be better. Because you're going to have three creatures in play that have haste and smack summon potentially for like 20 damage. I like this card. I like it a lot. Next super chat we've got from uh, Algot Panglacial Worm. This is that weird card you get from the library. Seven mana for a 9-5 with Trample. While you're searching your library, you may play Panglacial Worm from your library. Do you know what? It's probably okay to have like a one of in your deck. Especially if you have a lot of fetch lands. So late in the game when you have nothing to do, you go crack your fetch land, go find your Panglacial Worm and actually cast it. I can get behind that. We have named Lightsteel Colossus. Wait, does Nikachu actually know about Apex Devastator? You better believe I know about Apex Devastator. Okay, we got Joel here with Hoarding. Uh, Brood Lord. It's on half. It ends the game. Okay, we have a 8 mana 7 6 Dragon with Convoke. So it's actually pretty cheap. Uh, flying. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for a card. Exile face down, then shuffle. For as long as that card remains exiled, you can play it. And also spells you cast from exile have convoked. This is a great card. I can get behind this big time. Easily. Next super chat from Alpha Nerd. The Reaver Titan? I've never heard of a Reaver Titan. Reaver Titan. Oh, hey, there's an actual Reaver Titan. Get, step aside, Prime Evil Titan. We've got Optimus Prime on the house. All right, we got 7 mana, 10, 10 vehicle. It's a vehicle? This looks like a creature already. I guess you have to, you got to put someone in there. Okay, Void Shields. Protection from mana value three or less. No, yeah, none of your stick, your sticks and stones will not break my bones, but bullets and cannons will do it. Okay, Gatling Blaster. Whenever Reaver Titan attacks, it deals five damage to each opponent. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, I can get behind that. Crew four. So when it attacks, basically deal 15 damage by itself. I like it. Yeah, I like it. It's not living. I I, I understand. Oh, I learned that Baron Singer does still make plus two plus two counters, and only one plus one plus one and one and minus one minus one counters destroy each other as a state-based effect. Other power and toughness related counters don't have a similar rule. Oh, so what you're telling me is that if I have two plus one plus one counters on the thing, sorry, if I have a one plus two plus two plus two counter on Baron Singer. And then two negative one, negative one counters on Baron Singer, they all exist at the same time. Only plus one, plus one, and minus one, minus one cancel each other out. That's interesting. Henrik Sponshire of Ulamog. Come on, let's get them Eldrazi's out. 
you know, this is this is effectively an, an Eldrazi show. 10 mana, 7 11 Eldrazi with Annihilator 1. Pay 4, put 2, not 1, 2. Colorless Eldrazi spawn creature tokens onto the battlefield. That's right, pay, pay 10 mana for your 7 11, get two zero ones 1s. Uh, with it, you know, buy your buy them now. And if you get two spawn shire of Ulamogs, we'll even throw in a full, uh, free Ulamogs Crusher. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. They have uh, sacrifice this creature, add one mana to your map pool. Pay 20, cast any number of Eldrazi cards you own from outside the game without paying their mana costs. And remember, when you're playing casual, that means anything you own in your collection, maybe even in multiples. So long as they're not legendaries. Put a, an unlimited number of Emrakuls on the battlefield. And frankly, if you have 20 mana to pull this off, you deserve it. That should technically end the game, right? Like, if you have 30 mana, spawn Shire of Ulamog, pay 20, get like 20 Ulamog's Crushers, one Emrakul. What is the rules around banned cards? Like... What, what, does anyone know the technical rules around uh, banned cards? Cast 50 Emrakul. Oh yeah, you get 50 extra turns. Yeah, that would work too. Um, because I'm, I'm just wondering, is Emrakul legal if I'm casting from outside the game? Because as I understand, like I don't know the nuances of a banned card. For all I know, banned card means you cannot play it. You cannot register it in your deck. But it doesn't mean you can't play it from outside the game. You know what I mean? Am I gaming the system playing banned cards in this situation? You are casting it. They'll all die uh, immediately. So there's many ways to win. Th there is no sideboard in EDH, but under casual rules, outside the game means anything from your collection. In a competitive setting, outside the game means your sideboard. So uh, it's a weird rule. It's a very, very weird. Anyway, just something interesting to think about. Next super chat from Blake Mamba, the Ur Dragon. I was so confused when you be when you guys keep talking about the Ur Dragon. I always thought you're talking about Niv Mizzet, like it's the blue red dragon. No, it's literally called the Ur Dragon. Wooberg Forgenerk for a 10-10 with eminence. As long as it's in the command zone or on the battlefield, other dragon spells you cost cast one less. That is very good. Uh, flying. When, whenever, whenever one or more dragons you control attack, draw that many cards, then you may put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. Also busted. Very good card. Love it. As long as your friends allow it, then. Yeah. Yeah, most EDH tables don't allow wishes. It's not part of the format by default. All right. You hear that, Sponshire? You screwed. You're just like four mana crate tokens. Toilet duck. Emergent woodworm. You people have no love for the Eldrazi. Like this is the only this is the only type of show I can get the Eldrazi on here. We have a seven mana four four worm back up three. This is more of a worm show and dinosaur show than an Eldrazi show. Whenever this creature attacks, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is its power. You may put a permanent card with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So hold on. Whenever this creature enters the battlefield, put three counters on a on target creature. If that's another creature, gains the following ability. Oh, so you can't give it. Uh... Oh, so if you give it to somebody else, then they both have this ability to attack. Look at top cards of your library and then just put it onto the battlefield. That's pretty good. That's actually pretty good. This is not a real card, big free monster. You know, and you know it. You know, BSing me around here. Oh, there you go, Chenfer. I could have swore I saw you somewhere. Uh, thank you very much. We got Seraph. Maybe I saw your super chat. Uh, where's Seraph? Okay, we got White Six Generic 4-4. Four, four. Angel Creature Token. Whenever a creature dealt damage by Seraph this turn is put into a graveyard, put that card into play under your control at end of turn. Sacrifice the creature when you lose control of Seraph. Whenever a creature dealt damage damage by Seraph this turn is put into a graveyard you put into play under our control since when is Seraph gonna kill anything or when is our opponent gonna let that happen I think it's janky I think it's actually just a little too janky. a very interesting card I will admit I guess you if you somehow get Sarah Seraph to fight another creature they it thing that thing dies and it comes back under your control it works I guess that's one way to do it 
Uh, okay, Stone Hoof Chieftain? Stone Hoof. All right, it's a, it's a, it's a Stone Hoof and it's a Chieftain. All right, it's eight mana for an eight-eight Trample Indestructible whenever another creature you control attacks. It gains Trample and Indestructible until end of turn. But with the trigger on the stack, they can just kill the damn thing. Well, I, I mean, I guess it makes it more complicated for blockers. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not in love with the card, though. Blake Mamba, it that betrays. Oh, we did this one. Oh, you got you. I wouldn't say you sniped yourself or got sniped. That was like uh, one of the earliest ones. But thank you very much for looking out for the Eldrazi. I love it. Uh, it's not combat damage. Which one's not combat damage? Creature is dealt damage. Yeah, yeah, it's not combat damage. So, Seraph, you can, like, basically shoot things down by fighting. Oh, God. Scornful ego test. <laughs> What's a show without trolling with scornful ego test? The eight mana! Eight mana! So much ego, he... Scornful Egotist thinks that they're worth 8 mana, but only a 1-1, one, one, but 8 mana at heart. Anyway, can also morph for a blue. Could be a 2-2 two, two if they wanted to. They can be a 1-1, one, one, they can be a 2-2, two, two. they can be whatever they want to be when they grow up. Anyway, absolute stone cold trash. <laughs> I got a copy of Scornful Egotist, it is my pride. <laughs> they spin with the City Scape Leveler. Level they will. Okay, 8 mana, 8-8 eight, eight, trample. Uh, whenever you cast this spell and whenever Cityscape Leveler attacks, destroy up to one target non-land permanent. Its controller creates a tap power stone token, which they may not even be able to use. And you can even unearth this thing for 8 mana. Excellent card. It's actually an incredible card. Attacks. It's a, so when you cast it, counter or not, it doesn't matter. You still get the ability. Attacks, you get the ability again. For as long as it's, this thing can sit on and remain on the board. David with Primeval Spawn. Ooh, what is this? It is a Wooberg 5 generic avatar, 10-10 creature. If the enter if the spawn would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, or no mana was spent to cast it, exile it instead. That's right. No be cheating. Don't no cheating around here. Vigilance Trample Lifelink. When it leaves the battlefield, exile the top 10 cards of your library. You may cast any number of spells with total mana value 10 or less from among them without paying their mana cost. That's good. Now, the, the downside is this costs so much damn mana. It's really, really expensive. It's like outrageously. Ugh, it's 10 mana for this ability. Vigilance strength. Ugh, whatever. It's close, though. We actually have not done all the Eldrazi Titans. We're actually missing a ton of them. Okay, Wing of Shoe, Walking Skyscraper time. Oh, is that right? Walking skyscraper. Sky walking sky something. Oh, there we go. Walking skyscraper. It's an eight mana eight eight, but it costs one less to cast for each modified creature you control. Equipment ores you control and counters are modifications. Trample has hexproof as long as it's untapped. Not in love with it. So you go to in for the attack and then you can kill it. That's about it. I, mean, I like that it can be cheaper, but you have to have so many equipment on the damn battlefield. You equipment players. <laughs> Garbage Day says 99% of these cards would be cheated from the graveyard. That's right. They don't want to make sure you don't be cheating or out your cheating out your sp primeval spawn. Don't be playing Flash around here, even if you played with Flash unbanned. All right, next up, let's get. Who would win, Skyscraper or Titan of Industry? That's a, <laughs> that's a good question to ask. Okay, Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. Thank you. Because all our other like expensive mana card shows, they all had a color involved. These are colorless cards. 10 mana for a 10-10 Eldrazi. When you cast the spell, Exile. Two, target, permanence. Also indestructible, which is just unbelievable. And then when Ulamog the CS is under attacks, defending player. I mean, if you the, if you aren't going to get dealt, killed by the damage, 
you'll uh, you'll get your entire deck exiled because you exile the top 20 cards of your library. And let me tell you, you can't last that long under an Ulamog's attack. Kevin with Herald of Leshrac. Oh, whoops, this is the wrong Herald. Seven mana for a 2 4 flying. A cumulative upkeep. Gain control of a land you don't control. Oh, yeah, this weirdo card. Gets plus one, plus one for each land you control, but don't own. And also, when it leaves play, each player gains control of each land they control that you can. That they own. <laughs> when it leaves play, everyone gets their stuff back, basically. Anyway, I don't mind this card. It's, it's pretty neat. Although, at this point of the game, like, I don't know how much the, the mana matters, but I still think it's, you can still take, like, their best lands. You can take all their annoying lands, right? Take their uh, Maze of Eth. Take maybe their Dark Depth before they get a little feisty with it. Okay, we got uh, Elgot with Phage. Phage the something, right? There we go. Phage the Untouchable. I hear people like to make Commander decks out of this card. I have no idea how you cast it. What's your method of getting Phage on the battlefield without losing the game? Okay, it is uh, seven mana, four four. Enters the battlefield. If you didn't cast it from your hand, you lose. You lose the game. This might lose the game sound effect. It's not this though. Whatever, good enough. Uh, when Phage deals combat damage to a creature, destroy the creature. It can't be regenerated. But if Phage deals combat damage to a player, they lose the game. That's right. It danger. I think people, oh yeah, people play like Platinum Angel first or something. There are weird ways of... <laughs> if, <laughs> if someone pulls up with a Phage the Untouchable deck at your table, like what are your thoughts? Does anyone have an experience against the Phage deck? Toads with Progenitus. Oh, we're not done yet. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get another song though. There we go. Good enough. Progenitus. The Progenitus. Double Wooberg for a 10-10 protection from everything. But if it would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal Progenitus and shuffle it to its owner's library instead. I'm not as impressed with this card anymore. But you know what? 10-10 pro everything. You still... For 10 mana, even then, you still can't argue with it. All right. Let's get through all the Super Chats. It's Super Chat Central Time. Nyan's a quitter. I have fond memories of Giant Adiphage. Oh, you like them insects. You like big bugs. We got a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven Trampler. Whenever Giant Adiphage deals combat damage to a player, create a token that's a copy of Giant Adiphage. Oh my god. Now there's two of them! To a creature like that, we must seem like, well, bugs. Yeah, exactly. You look like ants to the Giant, uh, the giant Adiphage. Next up, we got Blake Mamba. Who's like Butcher of Truth? Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. Okay, 10 mana for a 12. 12 Eldrazi. We, can't, we cast the spell, draw four cards. And whenever Kozlak Butcher of Truth is put into a graveyard from anywhere, its owner shuffles their graveyard into their library. I think it'd be cool to own an Eldrazi deck just for the fact that you could just keep swapping the commander like every game. Okay, I want to play with Kozilek. I want to play with uh, Ceaseless Hunger. I want to play with this. I can play with that. I mean, they're all legendary creatures. I'm playing with Emrakul, the promised end. Definitely worth it. Welcome, Ron. I butchered the pun in your... What, Nyan Sequitter? Sequitter? I know the Nyan part. That's a cat. Oh, it's a non-sequitter. Aha, I got it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Okay, moving on. Uh, Alpha Nerd with uh, Technomancer. Okay, Technomancer is a black, black, five generic, five one Necron Wizard. Enters the battlefield, mill three cards, and return any number of artifact creature cards with total mana value of six or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's a little bit of a gamble, though. Just the top three cards. So you better stack. If you can stack a profit. Properly, it's good. If you're in the blind, I think this card probably will end up being bad. Alpha Nerd, uh, again with Shard of the Nightbringer. 
Charter of the Nightbringer is a 8 mana 8-8 eight, eight, Satan Flyer with Drain Life. Uh, when Shard of the Nightbringer enters the battlefield, if you cast it, target opponent loses half their life rounded up. You gain life equal to life lost this way. Okay, I actually like that. I think anything that gains that much life, especially at this point of the game, is actually probably going to be good. Somebody's going to have a lot. Someone might even be infinite at this point, and you basically got a little bit of piece of that infinite pie, in my opinion. Okay, next up, we... Uh... Okay, I'm going to get back to you, Alpha Nerd. But, you know, other people have super chats around here. I just want to, don't want to do four in a row. Okay, Jingitaxius. People love this card. Oh, but the you want the Prog Tyrant. Progress Tyrant. Favorite jank reanimator card. You got it. It is a 7 mana 5 5 Frexian Praetor. When you cast an artifact, instant, sorcery spell, you get to copy that spell. That's good value. Um. This ability triggers only once each turn. Oh, well, yeah, I was excited for a second. Whenever an opponent casts an artifact instant sorcery spell, counter that spell. And then this ability triggers only once each turn. Oh, it's like, um, oh, what's, what's her, what's she called? She's banned. It's the, it's the blue, it's a blue card. It's a blue creature, Areo. This is basically Areo. It's big, chunky Areo, right? Ireo says, you know, counter the first spell played by each opponent uh, each turn. This, you don't even have to work for it. If an opponent casts an artifact instant or sorcery spell. Oh, it doesn't hit the creatures. All right, creatures and planeswalkers, they get a free pass. Anyway, still, I, I still like the card. You get double your stuff, you get one less of theirs. Okay, let's mix in some alpha nerd super chats here. Uh, with the shard of the void dragon. We got seven mana for a seven, seven, Satan. Flying Spear of the Void Dragon. Whenever uh, Shard of the Void Dragon attacks, each opponent sacrifices a non-land permanent. Each opponent, though, and it can't be a land. That's actually quite good. Whenever matter absorbed, uh, then matter absorption. Whenever an artifact is put into a graveyard from the battlefield or is put into exile from the battlefield, put two plus one plus one counters on Shard of the Void Dragon. That is not very impressive to me. So seven mana, not haste. Whenever it attacks each opponent, sacks an online permanent. I don't like it, actually. I'm not in love with this card. I don't think it's all that effective. And he, people just sack their crappiest things. It does have flying, so it's it's got that going for it. Hey, I've never seen you here before. I'm going to give you this card. Lash Weed Wart Lurker. Welcome to the show. We got an 8 mana Eldrazi Horror. It's a 5 4 creature with Emerge for 7 mana. You can cast the spell by sacking a creature and paying the Emerge cost reduced by that creature's converted mana cost. And when you cast Lash Weed Wart Lurker, you may put target non land permanent on top of its owner's library. That's great! That's actually really good. I mean, it's basically, it's Submerge. I like Submerge. Submerge is a very strong, powerful effect. Okay, next we got uh, Carton Cat. Carton Cater with Desolation to win. Desolation Twin is a 10 mana 10 10 Eldrazi whenever you cast the spell. Create a 10 10 Colorless Eldrazi token. Honestly, I think this card's a little bit of crap. Like, it's 10 mana for 20 power, but like, they're just vanilla creatures. They could probably die to almost anything. Well, maybe not, not anything. Not gonna get by, hit by Bolt, Prismatic Ending. Uh, uh, fatal push, but there's still it still dies to Doomblade overall. Anyway, yeah, I totally forgot that this card even existed. Alpha Nerd uh, with Necron Monolith. Seven mana, seven seven vehicle. Wait a minute, these are vehicles. These these don't count. Why me? Why did I even rate that other one? This is a creature show. I'm not counting the vehicles. They are they are vehicles. Disqualified. I just realized that. So we'll donate this one to this uh, to the freebie section. Seagate restoration. Well, I think this is not even a creature. Seagate restoration. Not a creature. Disqualified. Welcome to the show, though. Don't worry. Everyone gets disqualified. Even seasoned super chatters. Okay. Uh, who else? Who else can we give? Is anyone new here? I want to give something to some new people. Alfred Monty with Belladross. 
Wither Bloom. It's a great value card for grindy matchups. Oh, there we go. We got big, chunky Wither Bloom creature. Okay, four, four, seven mana Elder Dragon flying. At the beginning of your of each upkeep, create a one, one black and green pest creature token with. Whenever this creature dies, you gain one life. Also, pay ten life. Untap all lands you control. Activate only once each turn. Interesting. What do I want? Do I want ten life, or do I want to untap all my lands and dump my hand? Hmm. Create a one, one black. At the each upkeep, so you're gonna get one. You're gonna get four of these a turn. With when this creature dies, you gain one life. I like that part of it too. I like this card actually. I'm gonna give it the. Pl I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. Definitely a thumbs up card. Cool stuff. Okay, Emery gonna. Sorry, Emmy gonna re redeem herself. All right, with the Sun Crusher. The Sun Crusher is a nine mana three three with Sunburst. So if you have Wooberg, it can come into play with, uh, comes into play with a plus one plus one counter on it. For each for each color, we got a four mana tap. Remove a counter from the Sun Crusher. Destroy target creature. That's actually quite good. Two mana remove a counter from Sun Crusher. Return Sun Crusher to its owner's hand. That's actually really worth it. So this is repeatable creature removal, and also, um, is this infinite mana in a way? I'm just trying to figure out. I'm just trying to think of a combo where you can play this. Not infinite, sorry, not infinite mana. I'm trying to think, uh... Because you spend two mana to get this thing back. Oh, no, okay, forget it. Forget everything I just said. There's probably... I'm just thinking there's got to be some good synergy by returning this thing back to your hand, replaying it over and over again. But it doesn't actually produce mana. It's really good with Joda! So anyone wants to combo Joda with the Sun Crush, you go look into it. We got Velocity Arrow with the Super Chat. Void Winner. Oh, we did Void Winner. Busted, by the way. Love that card. But we'll donate your Super Chats in honor of you. It does destroy all opponent's creatures with infinite mana. That is true. But, you, well, you need infinite taps as well. Combo with uh, Voltaic Key. Uh, Mimito. Feiji on touch. We did that one. But did we do... Lim Duel, the Necromancer. Oh God, it's a lot of Lim Duels. Lim, there we go. It's a seven mana four four human wizard. Whenever a creature an opponent controls is put into a graveyard from play, you can pay two mana if you do. Return that card to play under your control. If it's a creature, now it's a zombie in addition to its other types. Also, you can regenerate your zombies. So whenever a creature an opponent controls is put into a graveyard from play, oh anybody. Doesn't have to be your. It could be theirs. It can be your opponent's stuff. I like that. You can steal your opponent's stuff, and then regenerate and keep it onto the battlefield. Okay. Uh, next up, we've got. Oh my God! I still have so many super chats. We got Elgot. Uh, with does Brazil of Voice of Nightmares count? What's the back side of these? This thing technically has no mana cost. The other cards have a mana cost. Disqualified. I'm not counting this one. All right, so we're gonna donate that. Don't worry, because whenever we miss on super chats, that makes somebody like Jabinski's goat happy with the blight steel colossus. Oh, we did that one already. We gotta be more creative at this point in the show. New master, shadow of mortality. Although there's a lot of really good cards that haven't been mentioned yet. All right, we got. Freaking 15 mana for a 7 7 avatar. If your life total is less than your starting life total, the spell costs X less to cast where X is the difference. See, they worded it for those commander players out there. So if you're at 40 life and you go to 20, this thing costs 2 mana. Also, uh, if you're at 7 life in a 20 life game, it costs 2 mana. Uh, I think it's worth it. It's not bad. If you're in one of those decks that like to bring your life total to nothing, it's great. Uh, okay, next up, we've got Platonic Liquid, who's been here from the beginning of the show. Arcanus Ultra wants Apex De Devastator. Not really. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> okay, this is one of those things where we did it already. Devastator. Okay, uh, Apex Devastator. Now, we did, we've did. we already done this one, but you know, this is the card that keeps coming back. Because it cascades, 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 cascades. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll make this an honorary, uh, an honorary uh, donation. We'll give it to seven. Tyrannix Rex. 
I feel like I like if the show goes long enough, we get a completely different cr coffee crew. Tyrant, did I spell this right? Maybe, maybe not. Oh, I sp had too many T's in there. Tyrannix Rex. All right, seven mana for an eight eight. That can't be countered. Has trample. Word for haste. Oh, I like the haste part. And it's also got toxic four. In my opinion, busted. I think it's absolutely busted. Great card. Next up, we got the Deftonable. Or De Why? Oh, sorry, Deftonable? Uh, anyway, I have no idea what your super chat is. I have to dig for it. You spent a dollar? I appreciate your dollar, but at, unfortunately, at like a dollar, I don't get to see the super chat. You gotta spend two dollars or more. There you go. Okay, now what did you say after this? Okay, only two Eldrazi lores missing. Kozilek the Great Distortion and Ulamog the Infinite Gar. I'll give you the I'll give you Kozilek. Kozilek the Great Distortion. You know, they built a commander deck around this. The Great. Okay, they built a commander deck around Kozilek and it absolutely wiped uh, me and my friends off the off the face of the earth. This is 10 mana for a 12-12. But when you cast this, we're still not done yet. It's a long show. When you cast this spell, if you have fewer than seven cards in your hand, draw cards equal to the difference, which is damn good. <laughs> that's just that's just crazy. Uh, Menace. Discard a card with mana value X. Counter target spell with mana value X. It's, it's like the ultimate counter spell. And draws so many cards. Avoid as cryptic as reality itself. It's completely broken. Very, very good card. Alpha Nerd with the, the Null, Stole Gar Null Stone Gargoyle. It is 9 mana uh, for a 4-5 gar gargoyle creature. With flying, whenever the first non-creature spell each turn is played, counter that spell. Oh, sweet. So this is like the Ereo. I'm thinking, no, it's again, now it's non-creature spells played each turn. So they can use their removal on this thing. I like it still. I think those are, that's a very powerful ability. Whenever the first non-creature spell each turn is played, counter that spell. Hold on, it affects you too. I don't know how to evaluate this card. Probably not good, to be honest, but I like the effect anyway. Just play with uncounterable stuff. You gotta build around this card. We got Hunter with the Ancient Stone. Ancient it is. It is a 10 mana 12, 12. Golem with Flash? I didn't think a statue could just come out of absolute nowhere. The spell cost one less to cast for each attacking creature. That's amazing, actually. Okay, so you can attack with a swarm of stuff. This could be be in theory zero and uh, it's got trample when it dies create a 612 colorless construct artifact creature token with trample i like this card a lot i think uh i think in theory and in practice it's not going to be that expensive to cast and also it has a death trigger so it's going to leave something behind hey all seems like i'm late didn't we do more of fun the boundless very fun to play let's get more of fun on there more of fun the boundless i hope that wasn't a super chat from somebody Good, it wasn't. Okay, we got seven mana for a six-six shapeshifter with changeling, which means it's every creature type, including spider. Uh, as Morphon the Boundless enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Wow, only one? So many possibilities, and I'm 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 stuck to one creature type. Spells of the chosen type you cast cost Wooberg less to cast. It slivers love the sound of that. This effect reduces only the amount of colored mana you pay. Other creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one, plus one. The ultimate kindred card. Very worth it. Very, very worth it. Like, if you're in a sliver deck, I mean, this has to be your commander. Is there any other reason? Is there a reason not to play this as your commander in a sliver deck? Like, it literally cast your entire deck for free. I, I think some slivers have colorless mana in their casting cost. Some. Literally some. Okay, next super chat we got from a uh, Diesel Hall. First time on a stream. First print Nico Bolas, the OG. Let's get the OG text. What did the ancient scripture say? It is red, red, black, black, blue, blue, two generic for a seven, seven Elder Dragon Legend. With flying, an opponent damaged by Nico Bolas must discard their hand. Uh, ignore this effect if opponent has no card left in hand. Also, you got to pay three mana. However. Every turn, 
Got to pay that Grixis, or you got to sacrifice your Nicobolus. But you've spent eight mana to get it in play, so I don't see what the what the problem is here, unless someone Blood Mooned you, which they had at I think they had at the time, or maybe not. Maybe that would come out a few sets later in the dark. Um, I don't actually think this card is worth it. <laughs> it's, a, it's eight mana for a, a creature that like will make your opponent discard their hand, but at that point in the game they probably don't. Okay, I, I shouldn't say that nobody has cards in their hand by turn 20, because somebody probably played Windfall, or somebody has, like, uh, Consecrated Sphinx, or what's it called? Rhystic Study. Somebody ha is rich in cards, but at the same time, uh, they're gonna, th you probably don't want to attack them, or you're not gonna get any value, because they're probably gonna deal with it. They have all the cards in hand. Elfenerd with, uh, Velamachos. Uh, Lorehold, I like this dragon. Villamachos. This is that combo card, right? With extra attacks or something like that? 7 mana for a 5-5 Elder Dragon, Flying Vigilant Trample. Whenever it attacks, look at the top 7 cards of your library. You may cast an instant or sorcery spell with mana value or le uh, less than or equal to Velamachos. Velamachos! Lore holds power from among them without paying its mana cost. Put the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order. So I think the idea with this card was you fill your deck up with cards that give you extra attacks. So you keep attacking and you keep finding more of those cards that give you like untap all your creatures, re-attack again, and you can potentially kill somebody in one shot. That's the idea behind this. Nipple bolus? Do we see nipples? We do see nipples! Oh, can I get close enough? See that? That's not a fingernail. Yeah, there's the little nip showed. A little bit of nip. Amazing. Chat. We all, well, we all know what chat's looking for. All right, last one. Sarah's Emissary from Blake Mamba. You can spell Emissary right, damn it. Sarah! <laughs> That's funny. Some people look at the books. Some people look at uh, the nipples of uh, Nicol Bolas. All right, we got a 7 mana 7 7 angel. Enters the battlefield. Choose a card type. You and creatures you control have protection from the co chosen card type. Amazingly busted. If your opponent's only playing creatures or mostly instant or sorceries. They're in a lot of trouble. They're, they're in a world of pain. It's basically, it's almost like a, a little bit cleaner Iona. Nicol Bolas art is just the Rhystic Studies art. I guess it's true, yeah. In a world. Knowledge. Need to study. Agent of Treachery from Akaya. Thank you very much for your super chat. This is a 7 mana, 2 3 creature that's banned in historic. Uh, it's a human rogue. Enters the battlefield, gain control of target permanent. Yoink! And also at the beginning of your end step, if you don't, if you control three or more permits you don't own, draw three cards. That's great. I like this card. I think this is great. And you also like, you could steal things on your way of playing Agent of Treachery, and then when you get Agent of Treachery out, then all of a sudden you already own three permits that are not yours, and you can start drawing cards. Oh, that was supposed to be a donation to Arcanus Ultra. Okay, I'll go look for Arcanus Ultra. Arcanus, Arcanus, where are you? Plutonic Liquid looking out for you. Where is Arcanus here? I will look. I'm on the hunt. Hopefully they're still here. Okay. Thanks. Have a kind of a... Okay, hold on. Where, where's your card? You know, you can look out for Arcanus Ultra, but just tell me what the card is. She was trying to donate to me. I've been trying to get this same card out all show. I don't have one yet. Myojin! Well, you didn't get one card? I'm oh, sorry about that, Arcanus. Myojin of Cryptic Dreams. Well, you got it. Today is your lucky day. Because for this blue, 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 five generic, three, three spirit, enters the battlefield with an indestructible counter on it if you cast it from your hand. No cheating around here. Remove an indestructible counter from Myojin of Cryptic Dreams. Copy target permanent spell you control three times. I like that. It's a little bit of setup, though. But you get three copies. Imagine having... Ugh, you can't have three Eldrazi's, damn it. Can't be it cannot be legendary creatures. Copy target permanent spell. No, Confi and Emrakul don't work. Oh well. You have to do Apex Devastator again.
Okay, you can stare at that while we do all got all got super chat with the the modular modular monstrosity. You guys super chat so much. I need more super chat sound effects. This is not legal. It's a fake card, fake news. Donation. Okay, we're going to donate it to the freebie section. Did anyone get no card out today? You know, we didn't do Platinum Empyrean today. Even though I think you're responding to my ability. What, I, are you talking about when... Do I mean Platinum Empyrean? Oh, I don't know in, what you're in reference to this. But you know what? We haven't done this one yet. So we're, go we're doing it. Right, for Ginka. Okay, we got an 8 mana, 8-8 eight, eight golem. Your life total can't change. Um... There should be, like, some explicit, like, fine details. Uh, your life total can change if the Platinum Empyrean... Plat <laughs> life total can only cannot change while Platinum Empyrean is on the battlefield. There is no warranty on Platinum Empyrean. If Platinum Empyrean is destroyed, removed, phased out, uh, exiled, then your life, life total can may change once again. Make sure Platinum Empyrean is right for you. Tantra Tim Bowman with, uh, Chancellor of the Dross! Can be almost unbeatable in free form. Almost, alright? Almost like someone made a video about it. Beat my turn zero MTG deck. Uh, yeah, win $100. Wink, wink. Yeah, I have done that before. Uh, yeah, if you have 60 of these in your deck, or 100, you basically win the game. You may reveal this card from the opening hand. If you do at the beginning of the first upkeep, each opponent loses three life, then you gain life equal to the life lost this way. Oh, actually, this will not work in Commander because you can only do 21 life. Even if you had a 100 card deck of chance of the dross, you just lose as flying and lifelink. Anyway, technically not worth it. <laughs> it's, it's actually a pretty bad card. Oh, no, no. Actually, they made black burn out of this, right? I swear Saffron Olive had a few black burn decks. You basically just reveal this from your opening hand. So maybe it's jank playable. It's jank playable, if that means anything. Okay, we got Fungi. Uh, Fungi is with Overflowing Insight. Which is a blue, 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 four generic sorcery, not even a creature. This is most mana expensive creatures. Target player draws seven cards. It's very nice, but uh, it definitely is... Definitely is not a creature. Uh, anyone not get a card today? Can't tell if no one got a card. It not Talarian Terror. Popper Staple. In fact, actually, because of this card, like Delver is a pretty big deck in Popper. It is a blue six generic five five creature with Ward Two, which is very relevant in Popper. Uh, this spell costs one less to cast for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. Fill your deck with Brainstorm, Ponder, Preordain. You got it all. And you can cast your Talarian Terror for almost nothing. Great card. And is that it? Is that if we reached all the super chats? Uh, I don't. Oh, wait a minute. My super chat's cut out for some reason. We do have one more super chat here. Or we have a few more? Where did this come from? Fungi with overflowing insight. Did we do this one? Oh, was that the last one? Oh, that was, okay. Now I now I get now I understand why I'm confused. Uh, this was the the missed up super chat. All right, that's it. Hope you all enjoyed the best and worst, most man expensive creatures possible in Magic: The Gathering. If you want to be part of the show, you got to be here weekdays, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Remember, December 20th to January 5th, with the exception of Christmas, we're gonna have two coffin MTGs a day. One at 11 o'clock, but one at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Oh my God, this is gonna be a long two weeks for me. Not that I love coffin MTG though. I love it. I'm gonna even love it even more right before I go to bed. <laughs> So if you've never been part of Coffin MTG, maybe this is the time zone for you. I've got to thank everyone who supports the show. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, people who are patrons on Patreon, members on YouTube, or you super chat to contribute to, to the show. I love you all. And most important, we got to thank the people who show up in the morning. we got Steve Cooper, Mark Zilla, Mitchlon, Arcanus, Toads, Jess. Uh, for Ginka, we've got Mr. Deadhead, Mimito, Chris, B. Jackstraw, Job Plus, Platonic Liquid, Carton Cater. Toads, Pedgeman, Christopher B. Who else do we have? We have Darchon, Moly, we have Markzilla, 
Chris Belair, some pleb, Deftonable, Pug Hug, Adam, Callan Terez, Tommy Siddons, Nate, Hinaria, I don't know if I got you, Darth, we, we who, who else, we, we got Darth, Tetra, Tim Bowman, because you guys make the show. So as usual, my coffee crew, keep brewing up them coffees, and we will keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you at the next cup.